Johnson here again and in this quick video I'd like to show how to use Stair Designer with AutoCAD or ProjeCAD to design a curved handrail using the Tangent Handrail system. Now to follow and understand this video you will probably have to know some of the principles for setting out handrails with the Tangent system. And if you don't I suggest you go over to my website, there's uh, probably be a link at the top of this video where you can click and go over there and read the article on tangent hand rowling. You'll also be able to download the template drawings and an ebook that explains exactly what I'm doing. So today um, the hand tangent hand rail system has been largely forgotten which is a real pity because if you know how to use it you can really build hand rails, curved hand rails very fast and easy and ironically uh, this traditional method which was actually put together in the 18th century is very well adapted for um, defining tool paths on five axis CNC, ra CNC routing machines which can be very tricky to program for making ha reef hand rails so you know it's, it's a good thing to know it's a good thing to know whether you're a traditional woodworker carpenter or um, a very modern um, carpenter using CNC machinery. So let's get started. This is um, the stair I've actually designed, um, put very quickly together for this demo in Stair Designer. Um, I've exported the 2D DXF files, which I'm going to now open in um, Prodicad. So let's go over to Prodicad here, and we have here the 2D files from the Stair Designer project. Now I've prepared a template drawing, which is tangent demo here, which I'm going to paste into the template drawing all the geometry from the stair designer drawing so that we can start building the tangent handrail. So let's just paste in the different parts and let's go to the tangent drawing and paste them in. And here we have the different parts. In fact the parts that we need are the plan of the handrail, which is here, and the elevation of the handrail, which is here. Right, I'm going to just tidy the drawing up a bit so that we can, don't have to spend too much time panning around. And so we have them both together here. Right, first thing I'm going to do is to, we're going to modify, trim off a bit this uh, plan view. Um, let's put in the springing lines, what we call springing lines. Uh, springing lines is where the curved parts start. Um, from the springing lines, let's put an 80, 80 millimeter offset a joint line, this is the joint line, this is a, a, a little straight section I'm adding onto the curved section so that uh, we're making joining it up easier and then we're just going to trim off the extra parts that we don't use to get here. Now we have the plan view of the hand rail. Um, once we've got the plan view of the handrail, uh, we need that plan view to be actually a polyline. So let's join them all different elements together, and so that it will become one simple one polyline. So if I click on it now, we can see that it's all one entity, the outline at least. And let's put all these parts onto a layer which will help us, which will, um, the handrail layer here, uh, be green and so that we will have the drawing well organised. Right, next thing we have to do is we want to draw on what we call the prism. So I'm going to take the prism layer and prism is a sort of a, is a, in fact a, a block, a square, a square box that is actually drawn from um, with springing lines. I'll draw it like this. If you want to know exactly how the prism system works, I suggest you go over to my website and download the document that explains exactly how it works. And now we're going to draw on the center line. So let's go to the center line, um, the center line layer. Using a polyline again, we're going to draw here, draw a center line. Quite easy, and this is what we call a centerline. Right, that's okay now. That's the plan, all the plan view of the elements that we need to make the handrail. Um, now let's 
work a bit on the elevation view. The elevation, let's move things over a bit so we can get it a bit more closer. Let's move this over here for instance. Right, so the elevation view, which is drawn by a stair designer, is a, gives a development of the entire rail, but along the curve here. What we, do, what we want for the tangent system is not to put it along the curve, but to put it along what we call the tangents, which is along, uh, we want to develop the sides of this box. So what we do to do that is we just we're going to eliminate the curved development between the two springing lines. These two springing lines which represent the moment the handrail starts curling. And we're going to do an offset, that is we're going to do a parallel line. But the parallel line is going to be at, at a distance of the length of the square here. So this is springing line, one parallel line. And we'll do a second parallel line. That is, we've in fact developed the distance along this line here and then along this line here. And then we're going to move, in fact, the hand rail and the springing line to its new position, which is now the development of the square prism here and not the real curve. OK, that's fine. Now, using this, we're going to draw in the falling lines, what we call the falling lines. The falling lines, let's go to the falling line layer. The falling line is simply the axis of the handrail and the slope it has. So, first of all, we're going to draw in the axis of the handrail. And we'll get 40 millimeters. So, we're going to use this circle here, which I've drawn in the middle of the handrail, to define the axis. And we're going to, using this axis, we're going to draw a line in, a construction line here, which will give the new axis of the line of the handrail, the upper handrail moving down. And this is the, this is the angle that the handrail will have to move down into the curved section. We draw another line here. The second falling line has to start at the intersection on the, on the middle of the curved section, which is in the middle is here, and it has to go down at, at, at an angle so that we can join it to the lower handrail, which is rising. And now let's draw in the axis of the lower handrail as it rises. And this is, we'll say that the axis of the rising rail is something like this. We'll trim all this up. So that this gives us the directions. These are what we call falling lines. They give us the directions of the handrail. That is, the handrail moves up on the first flight here, and then it has to change direction. We'll put a ramp in here. I'll show, I'll show you in the ebook how to do that. We put a ramp in here, which goes, go, which makes the handrail move into the curve at this angle, and then it has to move out of the curve at this angle. On the upper handrail, we don't need a ramp because we've actually going out at approximately the same angle as the handrail that we're going to build. So we have to measure these angles. Let's measure these angles. And the measurement of the angle, this one is 54. Let's measure the other one. And this one is 37. These two angles are the important angles that are going to enable us to develop the handrail, what they call handrail face mould, which enables us to build a handrail in 3D. So, let's go over to the an isometric view. Now, what we're going to do is you use the plan view here. This is the plan that we drew later, earlier on, and we're going to extrude it into 3D. So let's go first of all to this layer and extrude it into 3D here. Uh, 3D, uh, let's extrude this one, and we'll extrude it up 2 metres high. Then we we'll go over to the next one, and extrude this one up as well, 2 metres high. And then we we'll go over to the centre line, centre line, extrude it up 2 metres high. Sorry, the centre line, I should have changed layer. I forgot to change layer. Centre line, put it back on the right layer here. So, 
we now have solids that we have generated by extrusion from the plan. Let's uh, let's just take this up here. Solids. We'll be using this later on, so I'm going to put this on the on the screen here. Up here. Let's put the screen up about here. Look better. Okay. Now um, we're now going to use these solids to calculate the what we call the face mold, which is in fact the um, projection of the plan onto an inclined plane. Well, to do this. We're going to take the UCS and we're going to put it here. And this UCS, we're going to turn it to give us the angle. And the angle that we're going to use, um, which is the angle of the handrail going into the curve section, is this angle here, 54 degrees. So we type in 54. And what we're going to do now with this 54 degrees is we are going to put a section into the prism or this square box here. We're going to put a section, calculate the section so that we get the angle of the um, handrail rising into the um, box or the curve section, shall we say. And here, Roger Cal has given us the angle. We are now going to put um, UCS here. And we're going to do exactly the same. We're going to turn it again, this time along the y-axis, and we're going to use this second angle, 37 degrees, to turn it along the angle that the handrail will rise out of the curve section. And we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to give a, a section to it, and this one, x, y. This is the second section. Now what we're going to do is we're going to align the UCS with a new plane. We're going to define it by three points, clicking on these three points so that the UCS is now aligned along both angles here. The plane that defines the UCS is at both angles. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut now, use the section slice command, and we're going to slice everything. And we're going to slice it all along this new angle and keep only the underside. And here we have now, we're going to rub this, this construction plane off, and here we have now the solids that are um, generated from the plan view that represent the, um, uh, the handrail, the centre line, and the prism that is used for uh, generating. So uh, let's see what each one looks like if we look at the prism. Here we have the prism. If we look at the, the handrail solid, here we have the handrail solid. And if we look at the centerline solid, here we have the centerline solid. Okay, now we have here the centerline as a solid. Um, what we need to do now is to change this solid into just lines. We don't want it as a solid, we want it as lines and um, curves and ellipses. So, to do this we're going to explode the solid. We use the command here, explode. Let's explode this solid. And now the solid becomes surfaces. We're going to rub off the surfaces that we don't want. And now we have two surfaces left which represent the inclined plane and the horizontal plane and we're going to explode it again so that these surfaces here become lines and we're going to rub off the different lines that we don't want just leaving the center line as a plan and the center line that is inclined on the inclined plane rising up in space. This line here which is inclined we're going to put it onto another layer so that we can um, be easier to manage later on. We're going to do the same thing now with the, um, we're going to do exactly the same thing with the handrail, solid handrail, this is handrail solid, we're going to explode it so it becomes surfaces and then rub off the different surfaces we don't want, all the vertical surfaces that we don't want, we're going to rub them away. this is another little 
one down here. Let's put it off. And here we have the ink, the um, handrail in plan and projected onto the inclined plane. And these now are surfaces. Um, we're going to take this surface here and put it onto the hand onto another layer, so that it's e also easier to manage. And like that, we we'll have a look at everything. We now have this. We have the center line, and the in red we have here the projection of the plan view of the handrail onto the inclined plane, which rises up. Um, we will be needing uh, also the springing lines on the inclined plane, so we're going to we're going to draw onto the handrail line. Let's, let's get the right get on the right layer. Let's go into the handrail layer here. Handrail on the inclined plane layer, and we can draw the springing lines along the side of the prism. Right. Now let's um let's uh, turn the uh, this drawing so that we get a so we get a face view a direct a direct 90 degree view onto the face of this prism which will give us the exact shape of the face mold to do that we're going to go use we're going to go put the UCS between these two points here now we've aligned it to the face mold and it's also on the inclined plane and we're going to ask to see the we're now looking at the uh, inclined plane directly on from above or it now we're going to just keep the center line here and the face mold and this is our face mold for building our curved rail um, we have to clean it up a bit let's um, let's just clean it up a bit first of all, we'll have to let's explode this which is surface into lines so we can clean it up a bit. And this we've got our now we have here our springing lines. These are the springing lines, start of the curve on the face mold. And um, we're now going to draw in the joint lines. So a joint line is the joint line is at uh, right angles to the center line. This is what this is our joint line over here. We we'll do the same thing over this side. Let's draw in the joint line from here, and it has to be at right angles to the side. These are all parallel lines, so right angles to the center line and straight sections. We'll rub off the different projections here, and here we have the face mold. And this mold. We can just print this out into a full size um, template and use it to draw our face mold. So now mold. here we have the face mold which we can use to build a hand wire. Uh, we can also um, use the center line which is uh, rising up through space to build a solid which will give us an idea of how the hand rail actually evolves through space. Um, to do this is very easy. Um, it's simply we can simply move the UCS onto the end of the rail here. We can turn it so that the UCS is vertical to us and let's draw on the vertical plane of the UCS a circle of 30 millimeter radius which we will now extrude along the path which is given by the center line. Now we have the, the handrail in 3D, we can shade it, and this is a circular handrail which we can turn up, sorry, and here we are, a circular rail in 3D. Um, let's uh, look at this handrail in space in isometric view as it rises up through space we can see that it we can give it we can see the actual shape of the rail now as it moves up through space and we can see if we give it a shade the position of it in the pr with the prism let's give it a shaded view with the prism and how the rail 
handrail actually lies on the inclined plane of the prism. Okay, um, this rail can uh, now we can add straight sections to the rail and we can actually look at the rail in 3D and put it onto the staircase that was built in 3D with um, stair designer. So this is the example of the handrail. I've actually put it, I've added straight sections to it which were built from the same plan and we've added it to the staircase built from stair designer. If we render the stair we can see the actual, um, here we have the stair with the curved handrail, curved rounded handrail. And we can see that the, the, sh the movement of the general handrail is pretty good. If we move the, ha move the stair around, we can see it from several sides. And this enables us to get a good impression of how the rail evolves in space. So I hope that's been uh, of interest to you and I hope that you can go over to my website and see more details about the tangent handrail system. I'm sure that you'll find it very interesting and it'd be 